welcome back with another video. So today's video is gonna be another girl talk video because you guys have been liking them. So this topic is gonna be on high school bullies or bullies, middle school bullies, bullies in general. But me personally, high school bullies because when I was in high school, that's when the real bullying started. This will be kind of like an encouraging video as well as like a story time video also mixed in with an advice video. It's kind of like a three in one video coming from me. So just a background on my bullying story. I just find it so funny that like I really thought like once upon the time those girls were gonna pick on me forever they were never gonna stop you know they were always gonna talk about my hair how tall I was how I dress my African being African in school they were always gonna talk about me and I really made it a point to kind of like steer away from them in school and not really confront them even though you don't have to be confrontational but basically just kind of like run away from my problems sometimes like I really wasn't like a scaredy cat type of girl but a lot of times I would just not go to certain events or not do certain things not say certain things not be at certain spots not talk to certain people all because I knew these girls who always had something to say so a little story time about my bullying story my bullying started in ninth grade I was in the art class with this one boy who was my friend uh, we're just gonna call him Daryl and there was this other girl who was the bully we're gonna call her Shamika. Shamika was in the 11th grade at the time and Daryl and I were both freshmen in the 9th grade and we were in the same art class. Um, the first art class, you know, everything was cool. Shamika was complimenting me, saying she liked my outfit. I was saying I like her hair, all of that. And then Daryl went and told Shamika like I was talking about her, like just made up this whole lie because he thought it would be funny. And from then on, Shamika and her friends made my 9th grade year a living hell. Oh my goodness. I hated going to school. I I begged my parents to make me transfer out of school. I did not want to go there anymore, all of that. As time went on, Shamika would bump me in the hallway. Her and her friends would pick on me. They would laugh at me. They would talk about my hair. Cause back in ninth grade, I didn't have like bundles. You know, I, my hair wasn't slayed. My closure wasn't laid, none of that. I didn't have none of that. I was wearing my, you know, 999 synthetic pack hair or I was wearing my natural hair. I dressed decently like I had some cute outfits and stuff, but because I didn't have Michael Kors bag at the time, I didn't have Uggs at the time. I think I did have Uggs, but I only had one pair and I never wore them because they ended up ripping on me. I didn't have like a whole bunch. I didn't have North Face. I didn't have just any of all of that. I didn't have Love Pink for real. They would always talk about me. Meanwhile, their parents were the ones buying them these things it's not like they was going out there working and can afford it and it's funny because I'm pretty sure I make more than all of those bitches do now <laughs> It came to a point where one day there was a big confrontation. It was just crazy. Then another girl started not to like me. Then another girl started not to like me. Um, this other girl, I remember in like 11th and 12th grade, she, I guess one, she was new to our school. So I guess she wanted to be cool with all the people who didn't like me because I mean, I'm gonna just spill the tea. Like everybody in my school where I was, I went to school in Southern Pennsylvania. Everybody that was of color, damn near everybody like 95% of the people was from Baltimore Maryland so it's not even no hate or no shade towards Baltimore Maryland but it was a lot of people in that school that really made me hate Baltimore Maryland at the time because I felt like damn everybody is like that like everybody always got some shit to say no she was from Baltimore she came in she got cool with the Baltimore girls the girls who didn't like me all of that and she would call me like ugly every day like every single time she see me after we leave class by ugly by ugly meanwhile when she first came in when I tell you guys this girl had a reverse tone invisible part like full sew it like it was a full glue in and everybody kept saying she looked like Tweety Bird because this girl was small and her head was big as hell you know her hair just looked big you know she had this invisible part like invisible parts was cool when I was like in ninth tenth grade but I was in 12th grade at this time like girl who still does invisible parts like come on girl we don't do that get a closure <laughs> yeah so everybody was making fun of her I never said nothing about this girl but she just had some reason to hate me then there was this other girl I don't even want to talk about her because it's like not to sound mean I don't like to down talk anybody because I consider myself a really positive person for real but she was just not cute okay she just wasn't cute she wasn't as cute as me she's still to this day not cute as me and I mean to be honest she's just really masculine like she can't dress her makeup eyebrow I could go on you know I, I'm not even gonna go there because that's just I'm not even on that like I used to be but basically it's just always been some girls picking at me and it made me feel more insecure about myself than I really was because I am a confident person at the time it was guys that talked to me you know my friends were cool I was living a decent life I was in cheerleading team I was in African what was it multicultural club or something like that I was on a step team I was in a lot of stuff like middle school going into high school and I didn't have no problems with bullies people liked me and stuff in middle school I didn't have no issue but 
soon as I got to ninth grade, all of that went downhill. I hated going to school. They always talked about me. They always had something to say about me. And it just made me like nitpick myself. Like as soon as they say something about my hair, I would beg my mom, mom, please buy me bundles, buy me bundles. She was like, no, you're too young. They say something about my, I guess like eyebrows, you know, cause I didn't get my eyebrows waxed until, I didn't get my eyebrows waxed or threaded until I believe last summer. This is me going into my junior year of college. Yeah, I was a sophomore, I believe. Nope, I was I was going into my sophomore year of college when I finally got my eyebrows waxed or threaded. Cause I remember I was, um, I got it done in Cleveland. They would pick on me for that. I begged my mom. She was like, no, what does a young girl need to get her eyebrows done for? Which is true because I don't even get my eyebrows done like that. I do it every once in a while if I had the time or the money. They would talk about my clothes that I don't wear love pink. I don't wear designer. I don't wear all of that. Mom, please buy me this. Please buy me this. No, she wouldn't let me do it. I saved up like money. I don't know where I got the money from because you don't have no job in like ninth grade for real. Well, at least I didn't. And I sent them my money and I bought me like a love pink jacket. You know, I have on love pink right now. And I was doing my laundry the other day and it was crazy because I have so much love pink stuff and I don't even care to wear it anymore. Like I literally would give all of it away to be honest. I have this love pink jacket. It was originally like $50, $60, but I got it for like $25. I don't remember where I bought it from. And I still have it. I still wear it like all the time. But like I bought it and I was, I felt like I was so cute. Like I did all this stuff to make the bullies feel as if, okay, she's one of us or okay, she finally looks good. And I remember the first time like I got my hair slayed, my mom finally let me get a weave at the end of ninth grade year. And you know, the lady doing my hair even had to beg her for me to let me get it. And I came and I was so cute. If I have some pictures, I'll see if I can insert them. But I felt like I was so cute. My hair was so nice. And these girls was like, mm, she finally got her hair done. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't even just shut up. Couldn't say they just wanted, they had to say something. Like everybody hated me ninth grade year, 10th grade. I think everybody hated me up until I was like a senior in high school. You know what I'm saying? That's when I really was like, if y'all gonna talk about me, let's fight. You feel me? <laughs> like that's how I was. And they just really picked on me and I, it made me feel self-conscious about myself. I tore everything apart about me. And that's something you don't want to do because I made sure that I felt like they were right. I made them feel as if they had always, you know, everything they said about me was true and it was never true because when I think back at it and I look at those girls, like they were never really cute to begin with. I mean, first girl that didn't like me, like I don't have a problem with girls being a bigger size, but she was big and I knew she was uncomfortable with her size. So to make her feel better, she picked on someone else who had a body that she wanted, she wanted to have and that's what made her feel better about herself. And then the next girl, she just all around wasn't cute. She was a tomboy. She thought like everybody liked her, but like I'm a girly girl, you know, I'm, you know, pretty girl, all this, all that stuff. And you know, that made her feel better about herself to pick on somebody who would have something that she wanted. And then the other girl who was just this like really tiny girl, like so small, but like she didn't even have like a big mouth, but she always had something to say. You could tell she just wasn't secure about herself. Like she just had something like she was tiny. I'm talking under five foot and here I am five foot 10. You could tell she wanted to be, you know, she wished she was taller. Cause the first thing she said to me before we ever even had beef was, oh my God, you're so tall girl. I wish I had your height. And then as soon as she realized that nobody liked me, that's when she wanted to get on her little bandwagon and start running her mouth. Anyway, so that's like the story time part. Now moving on to like more of the advice part. Honestly, you guys, bullying is something that needs to be brought to the attention of people around you. Now, I will say this before somebody points it out. People feel as if I was bullying girls when I made that video talking about prom dresses. To be honest, I can see how people may have taken it as bullying, but honestly, that wasn't my intention. Mine was just critiquing dresses, critiquing fashion, because that's what I do on my channel. That's what was being talked about at the time. It was more of like a current events thing. I didn't belittle any of those girls. I didn't call any of those girls out their name. I didn't call any of those girls ugly. You know, I didn't do any of that. I simply talked about the dress and, you know, gave my opinion if I liked it or not and gave credit where it was due. And I always said something nice about each dress, even if I didn't like it overall. I feel like I come off kind of harsh sometimes. You know, like I, it's just my Philly mentality. I'm from the East Coast. We kind of in your face, but you know, that's just how I am. But it was never like that. Bullying is something that needs to be brought to the attention of anybody. If you see bullying, stand up and do something about it. If you see somebody getting picked on stand up and try to help that person because you don't understand people be at their weakest point and can't fend for themselves because they feel as if no one's ever going to have their back through which is why they always let bullying slide they let the bully keep picking on them they don't fight back or they don't tell somebody or they don't try to come to amicable terms with the bully in my case scenario i honestly feel as if in high school i had friends but i didn't have real friends they may be my friends now kind of but i really only talked to one person on a daily basis that i graduated high school with like on a daily basis 
places. And that's my girl Dominique because she ain't never crossed me. That girl had my back at every time. When it was a problem, that girl had my back. My other friends was cool with the girls who didn't like me. And it wasn't even like they were buddy buddy with them. Like they were like both sides friends, even though they were my friends more, but they never really had my back. When it really came down to if it was an argument, they never really had my back. That made me feel as if they were right in the things that they were saying about me or I should be, you know, vulnerable and not really stand up for myself because it's like, I mean, who's gonna have my back other than me? And it's all these people talking down about me. I just feel like when it comes to bullying, you guys have to realize that nothing in this world is forever, bullying included. The more you allow something to happen, I'm not gonna say the worse it's gonna get, but the longer it's gonna go on, obviously. So until you step up and say something either to that bully, to a principal, to reporting people on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it may be, there's nothing that somebody could do because now you're in the situation where you're being personally attacked. It's to the point now, if I get on my YouTube and someone makes a comment about me that they don't, that you know, they don't like me, I respect other people's opinions. But when you are blatantly bashing me and saying that I'm ugly, I'm dumb, or I'm a bitch, or whatever it may be. I may go back and forth with you to let you know we don't tolerate that on my channel. And then blocked. You're blocked. Simple as that because you don't have anything to say if it's not going to be nice or if it's going to be something that's not nice and more constructive and more, you know, just harsh. It's a way that you can convey that to me without disrespecting me. Therefore, when it comes to bullying, until you stand up for yourself or have somebody stand up for you or do something to get people to stand up for you, like getting an outside authority, it's really nothing much that you can do. I don't like when I get emails from a lot of girls saying that they're being bullied, but then I ask them, okay, so what are you doing to kind of get a resolution to it all? And it's like, well, I don't know. I don't have anything to do. And I know you don't have the courage just yet, but I'm like really telling you guys, please have the courage to speak up. Please have the courage to confront. Please have the courage to tell somebody. Please have the courage to do something about it because I know the dark nights where you sit there and you cry yourself to sleep because you think there's something wrong with you. I know the dark nights where you sit there and contemplate self-harming yourself because you really think there's something wrong with you. I know the dark nights where you sit there and wish that it was just all over because it's just that bad and it's getting to your head. Don't think too deeply into that because when I tell you there's a light at the end of the tunnel, as cliche as that sounds, there is. I graduated high school with a 3.2 GPA. Both the schools that I applied to, you know, I only applied to two schools and I got into both of them, gave me admission. I got a dean scholarship for my other school that I was gonna go to. You know, I had all these things lined up and I don't even mean to down talk anybody that may be in the same situation as these girls, but every last one of those girls who made fun of me in high school aren't really doing anything with their life. They have a baby with a baby daddy who's probably inexistent because from my Instagram tea sipping and searching, I don't see baby daddy in the picture now. <laughs> They really just work in their jobs, maybe a nine to five, not in school or had to drop out of school or whatever it may be. Every last one of these girls are doing what I'm doing. Don't have a platform sitting up here getting money. Are not in school with their third year of college almost under their belt. Are not working towards empowering other girls around them because to be honest, they never even sat there and really changed their stuff. They wanted to be bullies all through high school and pick on people all through high school and never really just garner in what high school has to offer or what just being young has to offer, which is having fun and doing the things you need to do to get to the next step in life. They were too busy worried about me, who I'm not worried about them. And when I tell you guys, it's no shade to any of the girls that have children young, but in my opinion, I couldn't personally do that because I'm missing out a lot in life. And you can agree if you do have a child young, you're, you've missed out on a lot in life. It may be a blessing, but look at all the things you had to give up just because of that decision. And I'm not saying that those girls purposely did it or maybe accidentally did it, but it's something that happened to them. It's every last one of those girls. I'm not talking about the three I just mentioned. It's a bunch of them. It's almost like back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. You feel me? Back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. Back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. It's just crazy to me how far I've come from being bullied in high school, being talked about because I'm tall, being talked about because I'm African. I had people make up lies saying that my house smelled like African. People who have never been to my house. Like that's the crazy part. People that have never been to my house. People made up lies saying that when I was in 12th grade that I had sex with someone who was in like the 10th grade which was a complete lie because that's just stupid. Like I wouldn't do that and no I didn't do that. Somebody made up a lie saying that I got hold in the school like somewhere in the school. There was so many lies made up about me and it's all because somebody is envious of something that you have that they don't have, can't have and won't have. It's as simple as that. And no, I'm not gonna get emotional because I didn't cry all my tears in high school. To be honest, if I see those girls, I bet you one thing is if they see me, they're not gonna say nothing now because they see where I'm at. And I know a lot of them not necessarily, they don't necessarily watch
watch my channel, but it's girls that I've gone to high school with who watch me, who have seen me, who see that I have a YouTube channel, who know that I'm making money off of this, who know that I'm doing well where I'm at right now, who know that I'm doing better than them, who know that I look better than them, who know that my glow up was way more dramatic than their was. I mean, most of those girls still look the exact same way they did in high school. Nothing changed about them. Maybe they went through a little bit more puberty and that's it, but most of them still look the exact same way, you know? Not cute. Simple as that. And it's not even to down talk them, but it's just the, the reality of the situation. And I just find it so funny that like where I was thinking that I was never going to be anything more than what they told me I was to where I am now and how I'm progressing. I mean, in the next year or two, I'll be walking out of this school with a degree. Meanwhile, I'm not saying a degree means that you're better than somebody, but it's something that I have over you that I worked hard for. And you may be working hard for something else, but you too busy being so negative about life and about me and about other people that you missed out on your blessing because all of those girls were older than me. At this point, they should be almost graduating college, but they're not. It's like a sigh of relief to know that I'm just a living proof that bullying really does end. And at the end of it, if you use the way how those bullies treated you as motivation to what you really want to be and what you really are, you could be sitting up here talking to an audience. You could be sitting up here finding a cure for cancer. You could be sitting up here making money moves, you know, doing something like, you know, I have this personal prestige in my stuff. Like, damn, Chama, you didn't let those girls like really like tear you down. Like they really made me hate going to school. When I tell you guys, I begged my parents to make me transfer schools. Like, I really begged my parents every day, please take me out of that school. I don't want to be there. And like, they made me hate a whole city that, you know, I love Baltimore, you know? I I don't claim Baltimore, but you know, when it come down to it, where I'm at, I, I have a Baltimore in me. You know, I grew up around the area right there in like Upper Maryland and stuff. So I feel so proud of myself that I really overcame what those girls did and said to me for so long every day, all through high school. I didn't feel safe in that school. And even even when I did alert the authorities after a while, it almost became like, you know, they didn't really stick up for me. They didn't believe me. And one thing I will say, if you are someone who feels comfortable enough to report a situation, be consistent. Because my thing is this, take the pledge for anti-bullying and be consistent. In order to get anything in life, you need to be consistent and be persistent about it. It's not a one-time thing. It's something that you have to keep reiterating to people so that they know that you're serious and this is a constant issue. I remember one time I was at lunch in high school and I saw this girl picking on this guy. I walked up to her, you know, I simply just told Shorty like, no, you're not about to do that to him. And he came up to me later on like, you don't know what that meant to me to finally have somebody stand up for me like that because I never had nobody. I said, you know what? No, I really do know what that means because when I didn't have anybody and I really wish I had somebody, I could understand why you're so happy. Like, and once you get to the point where you're confident in yourself to confront a bully or stand up for yourself, you're gonna realize the impact that you have on other people dealing in situation. When you're being bullied, you have to remember you're not even the only one going through it. And I'm not trying to be insensitive but you're not the only one. Therefore, use that as motivation to really help others once you get out of your situation because I did that and it makes me feel so good that it's girls coming to me telling me thank you, you know, thank you that you did what you did. I don't want to keep rambling because like I didn't give you guys motivation, story time and all this little juicy tea on me from high school in a while but like I damn near want to get emotional just thinking about it because I remember those days. Like I remember the day where I came greased up with my tennis shoes on and all that like to the point where I'm like okay let's just fight you know let's fight because I'm, I'm tired of it and you know violence is never really the answer but sometimes you resort to it just out of frustration to get your point across with certain things and I just want to be like living proof to anybody that's being bullied or you know in the same situation as me or has been in the same situation as me just to know that life does go on it gets better and use that bullying as a motivation I feel like a lot of kids that have been picked on in life end up being more successful than the ones that were bullies look at Lil Yachty for example I know it's just it's random you know because it's Lil Yachty but he said he went to Alabama State University I think he was getting picked on because of his hair color skin color the way how he talked a year later this boy is making more than everybody at that school including the president of the school so it's just like it's always a miracle you know us kids that get picked on and bullied on you know once we get over that well we come out a lot stronger and if you are someone who may be bullying somebody who may be posting about a girl who may be talking about a girl in y'all group chat every day picking at a girl you see a girl walk by in school you laughing at her making fun of her outfit making fun of her hair you never know what that girl's going through as to why she wears what she wears, why she has her hair done the way that she does, and all of that. I mean, it's one thing to poke fun and all of that, but when it really comes down to something that is consistent because bullying is really described as something that is a consistent thing over and over and over, that's where you really have to draw the line. So think about the things that you're doing and make sure that if you know of anybody that's being bullied, see bullying, or you are a bully yourself, you stop and you make a difference and you speak up. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below. If you have any commentary 
or my commentary. I would love to hear you guys' sides of the story about, you know, if you've been bullied or dealing with bullying, if you've seen it, how this affects you, you know, how you feel about bullying. I also want to leave the link in my description box to the anti-bullying website and so that you could take the pledge. I took the pledge like maybe a year or two ago, I believe. And it's just something that's really near and dear to my heart. And if you have any other like instances about bullying, please feel free to email me because I will email you back and maybe we can have a discussion about that. Follow me on all my social media networks, especially my Snapchat because that's where I'm on the most and that's where I have behind the scenes stuff. And you know, I talk about video topics and you guys can send me in requests for video topics for our girl talk. And that is it. So I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely. Back then ho didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely. Back then ho didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely. Back then ho didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely. Back then ho didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely. Back then ho didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely. Back then ho didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes all lonely.